This is from the merch store of the podcast, the Disky Disc podcast. Such a game. I have been playing some games that were kind of such such games. <laughs> now, if you guys remember, I made a video about the PSVR 2 and I have been playing one game in particular on my PSVR 2, which I just never mentioned, but it is such an experience. If you have a PSVR 2, I think <laughs> that I want to say that this is the must buy game. And I'm talking about Kayak VR. I'm not a kayak person, who is? But this is the best VR experience that I have had with the system. When I started this game, I gasped of the reality messed up situation I was finding myself in. You are in this kayak, you can paddle away, you can explore several different worlds. One of them actually being Norway. <laughs> Which makes me think that is the only level that actually has trash in it. Why is it trash in Norway? But anyways, you can free roam, you can do, I don't know, some races. I didn't delve into that too, too much. I did, for the most part, the free roaming part. And gameplay wise, I'm gonna say it's an experience. It doesn't really have like a specific goal. There is no real actual like gameplay, like you have to do something. There are no quests or anything. This is an experience and for me, Hunting trophies is what I did in this game. And a lot of the trophies are quite easy to get, so it's really satisfying stuff. You can also be up there in the North Pole area and look at the Aurora Borealis. The Northern Lights, which uh, I see them all the time, I mean. I live above the Arctic Circle, so they are nothing special to me, but you can experience them too, I guess. This is a big recommendation from me. Such an experience. Uh, the best VR experience I have had. You can actually feel the water, like it rumbles in your hands when you are kayaking. You can also push your kayak out if you are stuck, like up against a rock or something. It is so weird. <laughs> Highly recommend that game. Thought I would mention it because I've been playing that recently. Uh, highly, highly recommend that. <laughs> Which also brings me to today's sponsor. I am sponsored by VR Wave and they make lenses for your VR headsets. Like if you wear glasses every day, you don't necessarily want to have your glasses inside of the VR headset and scratch up the lenses in there and all of that. So you can order your custom prescription lenses that you can put inside of your VR headset. They correct nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism, and it has a magnetic design for easily switching. They have blue light filter and anti-glare options to reduce eye strains. They offer lenses for several brands of VR headsets, including the Oculus, HP Reverb, GZ Pico 4, etc. I mean, just look at their page. And they offer worldwide shipping. Go over to the VR Wave store, link down below, and in pin the top comment, and check it out. Because if you ever play in VR, this is a must. This was night and day for me. And I don't even have a bad outside to begin with. But you know what? I felt the difference immediately and there's no way I'm going back now. The blurriness is gone for good. I also have a discount code. Use Isha when you're checking out. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Yeah. Yeah. Ha. Feeling stronger yeah. now. Yeah. Ha. Now another game that I've been playing on my Nintendo Switch is Trinity Trigger. I've been meaning to talk about this, but yeah, okay, here I am talking about it. Trinity Trigger, maybe you have seen it, maybe you haven't, but anyways, it is a game that I think you will like. If you like the games that I like anyways. I like this game, is what I want to say. It is really my style. It's an ARPG, colorful and funny graphics. I like the art style and it actually has English voice acting. The combat is fun, fluid, smooth, not too complicated. Plenty of playable characters, plenty of variety in biomes that you explore. You're going from town to town. There is a main story, but it isn't very interesting. Gameplay is definitely fun. I am having a fun time. And there are also some dungeons and some bosses. The bosses are kind of... They take some time to take down, let's say. Can be a challenge, but not too much of a challenge. The dungeons are somewhat simplistic and you will be using a lot of potions. So be prepared for that too. Now let's do this. 
the anime cutscenes, they are really good. They happen sometimes in the game. And I'm like, oh my god, that is really good. Reminds me of Rune Factory 5. They also had some anime cutscenes in between stuff. Now, the town music is driving me semi-nuts already and actually also while you're fighting I'm using the girl with the bow I had to turn down voices a bit because that was also really repetitive like the uh, fighting noise that she makes I mean now I'm nitpicking but it was also driving me slightly semi-nuts you can fast travel, save and level up your skills at designated points and every area has an amount of chests for you to find as you can see up there. Difficulty is medium, I want to say. It gets harder and harder. <laughs> I like it, I find it really cozy. Though I am not overly obsessed with this game, it's a game that I will play sometimes, a little bit now and then. I hope you wanna check it out, Trinity Trigger, actually good. It gets a stamp of approval from me. Okay, now we have gotten to the main attraction of the video. Have you guys played the new DLC of Xenoblade Chronicles 3? Because I have been playing that for so many days now and I cannot put that game away. This one is actually hooking me in, actually making me obsessed. And you guys know that I love that feeling, getting obsessed with a game. And this time, I don't know what it is, but... Oh yeah, actually, I know what it is. This is fan service for the people that enjoyed Xenoblade Chronicles 1, like I did. Also, fan service for the whole series. There are references and places and locations that are from Xenoblade Chronicles 1, 2 and 3. And the story is actually, in a surprising way, connecting all of the Xenoblade games. I mean, that is such a good concept and I had originally a lot of questions when it comes to how is Xenoblade Chronicles 1 connected to 2 and 3? Do you guys remember when they dropped Xenoblade Chronicles 2? We were talking in forums online, Lord, on the internet, like how are the worlds connected sort of thing and I remember there were a lot of theories. Now the lore of Xenoblade, the entire universe, it is a complex storyline, big lore, and I am deep diving straight into this, and the story is just so satisfying. Now back to the actual game, the DLC, it's called Future Redeemed, and I can't believe that they are calling it a DLC even, because this feels like its own big game. This is Torna all over again, it is not... In my opinion, it's not a DLC. This is a whole new game that you start a brand new save file in. You don't even have to have played Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Your save file from number 3 has nothing to do with this, you know. It's a separate thing. It's own separate startup screen and everything. It's a whole game on its own. Lengthwise, it's like 20 to 30 hours if you want to do and see everything. Now, I am having a blast. I'm having a wonderful time in this DLC. You get to meet Shulk, you get to meet Rex, I mean the characters. I am loving the new characters also, Matthew and A, loving them. Also Glimmer and Nicole, good stuff. Gameplay wise it is what you can expect from any Xenoblade game. You have huge big open areas and you have this little check mark above all of the enemies which goes into the Collectopedia and the Enemypedia. That's not what it's called but you know what I mean. If you defeat like for example four of every enemy in the game you get that little check and you get affinity points also for filling out that Collectopedia which is so satisfying and I love that sort of stuff, uh, you get affinity points that you can spend into every character's skill tree. So good! <laughs> this gives me such a good reason to actually explore everything, kill a bunch of enemies, level up and grind and do and look and find and complete everything. And I love to uncover the map. That is also something that you can do, like we did in all other Xenoblade games. Loving that. And you also get to Colony 9 from Xenoblade Chronicles 1. And there is nostalgic music. For the people that loved Xenoblade Chronicles 1, you're just gonna love this DLC. DLC future redeemed. The battles are somewhat the same as in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. They are good stuff. I like it. I like to play as Matthew. 
He's my favorite actually because he's more fun. There are a ton of side quests and I can't get enough of this game. Actual hype. I can't recommend this enough. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed. You just gotta play this. Performance. I think it's blurry, just as Xenoblade Chronicles 3. People keep saying that these games are so impressive on the Switch. Maybe they are, but you know what? There is a Switch blurriness, and it just is. Game-wise, perfect game, fun game, all of that, but it is blurry. I play in handheld. Don't know if that has anything to do with anything. And also, when it comes to performance, there are some places there are broken audio, and some few places I have noticed like one frame per second stutters. But that has not taken away my enjoyment. Highly, highly recommend this game. Of course, I want to hear what you think of it. Maybe you have played it already. Maybe I am late with editing this video. <laughs> Now, I hope you want to listen to Disky Disc, the podcast I have with Tiny Hats, and you can click um, here. No way, here. Yeah, click there for Disky Disc. We also have a new mini cast up. Check that out as well. Also, thank you, VR Wave. Check out my link down below. And I want to hear what you think of the new Xeno Applied DLC. Thank you so much for watching, and I will definitely see you later. Is that a new thing that I'm gonna do? That's gonna get old so quickly though.